because I kind of should have written this the other way, because normally it's written like this, right? Normally it's 1 over x, or if you see a fraction, you got to know, in order to get it in terms of an exponent, which is what we need for a logarithm, you always just move it up and make it a negative. Um, negative exponent means the reciprocal. That's the definition of a negative exponent. And we talked about this a lot yesterday when we went over that homework, but I thought I'd just write it out for you again. Uh, anytime you have the nth root of anything, you can rewrite that as an exponent. We call those rational exponents, but you got to remember that that's the same as saying x to the 1 over n. So if you see the square root, it's x to the 1 half. If you see the seventh root, it's x to the 1 seventh. Um, and you got to be able to write it like that when you're doing your logarithm. So then I threw in this one. What if there's a root on the outside and a power on the inside? It's the same thing as this, right? There's a 1 here right now. That's why it's 1 over n. But if it's like this, this is still your denominator of your fraction. This just becomes your numerator. So this becomes x to the m over n. Yes? Yes, very important exponent rules. And why are they so important? Because remember that when you solve a logarithm, this is the definition that you should be using or at least thinking about, which means every logarithm problem that I give you to do without a calculator, you could rewrite it in terms of an exponent problem. So all those problems that we went over yesterday, the 2 through 26 even, every single one of them, when they give you this, you got to think about, that's my base. The answer is my exponent. And it equals, this is like the, the answer that we get. And maybe after graphing these, it's helped a little bit with that definition, but uh, it was a little fuzzy yesterday, I felt. So we're just going to practice a couple of these, just like the one that we did yesterday. And some of these are going to be a lot easier than others, meaning that there's not really a whole lot of simplifying you have to do. Um, but what you want to be thinking about when you see a problem like that is remember you're looking for the exponent. And it's all about whether you rewrite it or not, being able to think about it, right? So on this one, I'm thinking this is saying 7 to the what power equals 49, right? 7 to the what equals 49. And if you wanted to, which you really don't have to on this one, because we know every single time on these no calculator problems, you can rewrite this as whatever this base is. And that's what we did on those harder ones yesterday. But this one I know you would just write 2, and I'm okay with that. But I just want to show you, you could rewrite 49 as 7 squared, and your answer is always, what is this exponent when you can write them as the same base? So the answer is, 7 to the what power equals 49? The answer is just 2. This is kind of like the work you should be thinking about when you're doing this. No, this is 3, 3 extra. 3, 3 intervention, that's what this is. What about this one with uh, out a calculator? It's base 10, right? So could I rewrite this as 10 to the something equals 0.1? Again, every single one of these problems without a calculator, you should be able to rewrite this in terms of 10 to something. So how do you say 0.1 if you say it correctly with, like, the way we say it? One tenth. So what is that the same as writing instead of 0.1? Could I write it as the fraction? One tenth, right? Like if I gave it to you like that, I think it would have probably been a be an easier problem. And again, I'm okay if you just know the answer from here, but you should be able to tell me what exponent on here is going to give me this. And every time, if you're struggling with this, you should be able to. Do I have more? Uh, you should be able to write this as ten to the some power. 
What is one tenth the same as? Ten to the negative exponent means I can bring it up. So that means my answer here is negative one. So remember that decimals and powers of ten are not that scary because you can always rewrite it as a fraction. It just means a negative exponent. That's why I gave those up. We're going to do them. I think I have some more in here. There's too many left. All right, let's see. Let me just make up one for you, Logan. The square root thing um, is just knowing those. Um, I'm losing my mind here, kids. Let me make up. <laughs> I feel like my smartboard is off a little bit. Like when I touch it, it's doing the wrong thing. So let's make up a new one then for Logan. What if I said log 5 of 1 over the fifth root of 125? Every problem, no matter if it's as simple as log 7 of 49 or looks as ugly as this, your first step should be rewriting it and trying to write them as the same base. And so if I rewrote this one, that would be the same as saying 5 to the what power equals 1 over the fifth root of 125. And this is really where it just comes down to you have to know those rules that I wrote out up there. Um, how can you rewrite the fifth root of 125 um, without the root, maybe without even the fraction. So step one, let's get rid of the fifth root. How do you get rid of that? I could leave it in the bottom here, and I could rewrite that as 125 to the one-fifth power. Root means fractional exponents. And again, I'm going to bring that up, because this is not a fraction, and this is a fraction. So I want to write that as 125 without the fraction. So what do I have to do to bring that up? So that would make it a negative. And really, it's just like those other problems that we did, except for there's already an exponent on the outside. The answer is not negative 1 fifth, because this is not written as 5 to some power yet, right? Like that's the extra step in this. Uh, 5 to the what power equals 125? 3. 5 squared is 25. You multiply by 5 again. So I could rewrite this as 5 to the third to the negative 1 fifth. Once you get them as the same base, your answer is just simplifying those exponents. And what do you do when you have an exponent to an exponent? You multiply them, and it's just a fraction. It would be... The answer to this would be negative three-fifths. So every single time, you have to rewrite it and then make it as the same base to figure out this fraction key. And that's where you have to know those rules at the top there. We also have LN, and we kind of rushed through that at the end of 3-3 uh, three, three day one, so I wanted to kind of touch on that again. What kind of um, ln is just a logarithm with a special base. It has a base of e, but all of the same rules apply, which means you could rewrite ln every time as e to the what equals this. But the really nice thing is that most of the time with ln, you can just use this lovely little property here. If you have log base a of an a to the x power, those are inverses, exponential and logs are inverses. So they cancel each other out, and you always just get x back. Well, ln is base e, so this is like saying log base e of e. So again, they cancel each other out, so you just get x back. So when you see those ln problems, you could rewrite it if you want. But for me, I always just try to write it as a power of e. Because if I can write it as a power of e, then my answer is just that exponent. And I don't have to 
we write it every time. Um, so let's look at a couple of those. When I see ln of 1 over e squared, I want to write that as ln of e to some power. So it is, again, all those exponent rules. What can I do to 1 over e squared to make it just e to a power and not a fraction anymore? Make it negative. So this will be the same as saying ln of e to the negative 2. And on all of these problems, if you can write it as ln of e to something, ln of e cancels each other out, and your answer is negative 2. And so I don't do as much work on these as I do on that, the other log problem. So try this one. And what would my uh, exponent be on this if I change this all to exponents? Yeah, it would just be 5 thirds, which means that's my answer. The answer is just 5 thirds. So don't be, don't be thrown off by that. It's just knowing those exponent rules. And then the one other thing I want to hit again today is uh, graphing not with base 10 or ln, um, because I want you to be able to graph in any base. Uh, and be able to choose the numbers that give you a perfect square, like our first one we did yesterday. So I got one more example. And I could throw something in there like adding and subtracting, but I really just want you to get in the habit of knowing what numbers can I pick for x that I could make a decent graph of this. And you don't have to pick a lot of points. Um, really, like, Two, maybe three at the most would be what you would want to pick on this. Um, but log five, that is not one that your calculator can do, or if you can do it, then it's not one you're going to be allowed to use on the test. Um, but we are still going to be able to graph this because we know that we just need this to be powers of five. Do you agree with me on that? If that's a power of five, then we know the exponent that goes with it. So when I make my xy chart and I'm graphing something like this, I can't just pick any number. Like, I can't just pick 7 for x because I don't know 5 to the what power equals 7, and my calculator doesn't do that one for me. So um, every time I start with the same number, what number can I plug in there for x that will give me my x-intercept every time? If you plug 1 in there, that's like saying 5 to the what power equals 1. Pick 1 every time if you can. Or what number would make that equal to 1. Uh, and that would give you 0, right? If there was something added or subtracted there, then you might have to pick a different number. What's the next number that you have to pick for 5 if we're going in order of powers of 5? Can I pick 2 there? So if I said 25, that would work. It's kind of a big number, but it would work. 25 is a power of 5. If we wrote this log 5 of 25, that's saying 5 to the what power equals 25. And what's the answer there? 2, right? 5 squared. Is there a number in between 1 and 25 I could pick? 5. You can always pick 1. You can always pick the base, because the base is a power of itself. If I have log 5 of 5, what's that going to equal? Which means that's really all I need to graph this. I'm definitely not going to graph 20 by 2, but it's nice to know how slow it's going up. One zero. 5, 1, and remember, every time it's an asymptote, which means I'm not going to pick any points back here, but you got to know, as you pick numbers between 0 and 1, as you pick those fractions, you're going to get negative numbers here. Uh, and so, 
you don't have to take a lot of points here. You just got to know the shape of the graph. Like, I've graphed two points, but that's a really accurate graph for log base 5 of x. And last year in Algebra 2, we focused a lot on these types of graphs. This book focuses a lot more on ln and log base 10, but I want you to be able to do that as well. So what I have for you today is a worksheet over the topics here. On the front side, these are ones that you should be doing without a calculator, like using the definition, thinking about what exponent. Some of them are pretty simple, some of them are a little bit harder. That first one is log base 5, it's kind of blurry, but I think the rest of them are okay for me from there. And then the back side, I gave you uh, three graphs and then a little problem to think about, alright? So um, this is your homework, and then we're going to turn this in on Monday, but hopefully this will be some extra practice that will make you feel better about this before we move on with uh, probably the exponents, or probably the logarithms we're bringing in on Monday. Okay? We actually have a few minutes, about eight or so minutes to work on this. So, the front side, there's 20 problems, but it shouldn't take you a, a million uh, years to do that. Also remember that test corrections, um, retake Monday is the last day for that, so if you have not finished your test corrections, you might want to make yourself a note uh, to finish those this weekend.
Thank you. 